one and thank you, Dr. Knight. Thank you again. So today I will be sharing with you a brief synopsis of my child, of my experiences, sorry, and perception of weight, obesity, and BMI from childhood into adulthood and its impact on my physical and mental health. Please note that my experiences are based on my identification as a Jamaican woman and on my experiences of living in the US and cannot be generalized. Now, as an adult woman, I understand the importance of using BMI to track weight in relation to, to one's health. From childhood, even going into my teenage years, I do not recall the use and application of BMI being used extensively but I vividly remember outdated terms such as overweight and fat being used abundantly. Irrespective of what language was used, I was less concerned with the numbers and the health implications of being categorized as having excess weight, and more so about how I felt and ultimately what others thought about my body image and appearance. I was not overly concerned about how excess weight increased the risk of developing greater chronic diseases like diabetes and hypertension, diseases that are rampant within the Black community and unfortunately inherent in my family. From my childlike understanding of these diseases, only adults were afflicted, and from what I observed, they did not look sick, so it couldn't be all bad, right? My parents were concerned about my health, as I was told to stop eating this, and when I didn't listen, was criticized with don't you see your size? Their anxieties resulted in visits to the doctor. I recall once my mother relaying her fears about my weight in addition to my cholesterol levels. Her fears were quelched when the blood tests and those thereafter indicated I was healthy despite my poor eating habits and outward appearance. I was physically healthy and just as capable athletically and in some instances better than my friends and classmates who were slimmer than me. In fact, I had a very active childhood. I was a competitive swimmer for my school and local swim club. I swam six days a week, did ballet, and participated in regular, regular um, school-related sporting events. Despite my level of involvement and the numerous medals and awards I received in sports, my achievements were minimized because of my weight. I was teased and sometimes subjected to humiliation. I will now recall an event that has shaped who I would become and how that impacted my self-esteem and self-worth. I remember it like yesterday, participating in a high jump competition at my elementary school, my elementary school's annual sports day, successfully jumping over the horizontal rope that became higher and higher at each level. After making it into the top five, this successful landing was immediately overshadowed by a spectator who shouted from the crowd, look at fatty jump, which was immediately followed by laughter from the crowd. I was humiliated and realized from a very young age that my accomplishments and everything about me would always be based on my weight and size. I was even subjected to competence to, com to comments and pseudo compliments that around my weight on a regular basis. I was constantly told you dress well for a fat person or you are pretty for a fat person. I internalized others beliefs and thoughts about me and allowed them to dictate how I would live my life. As a teenager, I, I made sure that I stayed out of the spotlight. I eventually quit swimming and never tried out for activities that would promote teasing even if it was something I was remotely interested in, like cheerleading. I continu continually feared what others would say, and I reminded myself that cheerleaders don't look like me. Fat people aren't cheerleaders, I thought, immediately killing my teenage dreams. Instead, I did activities that would draw less attention to me or my looks, activities that were focused primarily on academics and developing my leadership skills. I also buried my head in books, and became obsessed with fashion magazines that perpetuated the thin ideal and dreamed about how better my life would be if I were thin. I desperately wanted to be normal and thin and needed to lose the weight. I wanted to be liked and be seen for who I was beyond my weight and size. 
As I got older and my weight increased, I became more desperate to lose the weight. I tried multiple diets, of course, always motivated by diets that guaranteed I would lose 10 pounds in seven days. I would give up by the third day and at times gained more weight. I constantly criticized myself and stressed over my inability to lose weight. What was wrong with me was a question I constantly replayed in my mind. Unfortunately, my efforts would go unnoticed as they meant nothing without results. I frequently reminisce on how a dermatologist casually mentioned after a follow-up appointment once, you need to lose weight, girlfriend. Shocked by her words, not once over the numerous visits did we discuss weight or hear her offer suggestions on how to manage it. Her words were shameful and damaging. I was frustrated and never returned for subsequent visits and avoided all doctors unless it was medically necessary. Now that I think about it, none of the doctors gave me advice that I already didn't know, nor did I sense that they had a vested interest in helping me to lose the weight. I feared going to any doctor, but looking back now, I could have benefited from medically assisted help that I nor my parents knew if they were available or accessible at the time. But what I did know was I did not need reminders about my weight and body. It's like doctors think individuals of a certain size are not aware of what they look like. Trust me, we know. There are reminders everywhere. The mirror with the image staring back at you, not being able to find clothes in your size, friends getting the attention that I wanted and needed, the anticipated fear of being teased and bullied, and the fear of sitting in certain spaces and on certain objects that would crush or break under a certain weight. These negative experiences would demotivate me from doing the activities I needed to do to lose the weight. At some point, my fears were much greater than my desire to lose weight. I believed leaving Jamaica and starting over would be the push I needed to try again and become a new and better version of myself. Within my first year of college, I went from a size 18 to 20, sorry, from a size 18, 20 to 14, 12 as a result of a new environment that promoted tons of physical activity and better eating habits. I had a newfound confidence and taste of what it felt like to be normal. The weight loss did not last very long and my weight and size fluctuated over the four years and went right back to the original weight by the time I graduated. I went back on the diet Ferris wheel and for a number of years uh, worked for a number of years, some worked well and others did not, but the weight always came back with a vengeance. And eventually I got to the highest weight of close to 260 pounds. My thoughts about health changed when diagnosed with hypertension at 28 years of age. I never imagined I would have this disease. I was too young. This diagnosis scared me to my core and forced me to take a serious look at my health. I concentrated on changing my eating habits and becoming more physically active. It was at this point in my life I educated myself on foods that nourished my body and strived and strived for a normal uh, body range. I didn't want to be chained to a life of medication forever. These changes led me to lose over 100 pounds. I worked hard to get to the normal range after two years. and I reached a weight of 147 pounds, but it never lasted long. And eventually I got to a BMI of 25 within a year. Since my initial weight loss, sorry, since my initial weight loss in 2012, my weight fluctuated between 10 to 12, 20 pounds over the past 11 years. Over time, I've had a team of doctors who have not been overly concerned with my weight, but instead remind me of how far I've progressed and that most importantly, I remain healthy. My own internal fears would shame me as I have become accustomed or would, would assume that because of my past experience with doctors that they would shame me too. Instead, they have been supportive and equipped me with the tools on how to take a holistic approach to health. Unfortunately, the scar and wounds, and dare I say it, the weight of my body issues have me living in constant fear of what would happen if I gained too much weight. I still experience unwanted comments about my size and weight, 
that trigger my own internalized fear, but it's something that I must continually overcome. I'm also at a point now where I'm older and living in a country and time where I have more access to multiple approaches to aid me in my weight management journey. As a future researcher and scientist, I understand the purpose of BMI and how it's standardized way to classify weight. But from a patient's perspective, I am more than a number in a category. I'm a person who wants to be heard and treated with respect. I also believe providers need to be educated on weight bias and discrimination and trained on how to properly communicate with their patients. I truly believe that weight management is not a one-size-fits-all approach. Therefore, quality healthcare requires a holistic and individualized approach where patients must be heard and understood to effectively prevent, reduce, and treat obesity. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. White. 